Hello, and welcome to another episode of Optimal Anesthesia. Today, we're delving into the intricacies of the velopharyngeal mechanism, its role in GI endoscopy, and the implications for anesthesia pharmacology. Get ready for an enlightening journey through the anatomy, challenges, and innovations in this crucial medical realm. We're zooming in on a crucial aspect of airway management during general anesthesia for gastrointestinal endoscopy. Specifically, we'll be exploring the intricate dance of muscles in the velopharynx. So, buckle up for an enlightening journey through the anatomy of the velopharynx. Now, let's start by picturing the velopharynx as a dynamic gateway, crucial for speech and other essential functions. This muscular valve spans from the back of the hard palate to the posterior pharyngeal wall. Think of it as a carefully coordinated team of muscles working together to create a seal. Our first key player is the levator veli palatini. This muscle is like the MVP of the team, responsible for elevating the soft palate. Imagine it as the gatekeeper, lifting the velum to initiate the closure of the velopharynx. Next up, we have the musculus uvulae, a smaller but equally important member located within the soft palate. It's like the conductor, controlling the movement of the uvula, ensuring everything stays in harmony. Now, picture the superior pharyngeal constrictor as the muscle that tightens the pharynx, playing a key role in velopharyngeal closure. It's the bouncer, narrowing the passage to create a secure seal. Enter the palatopharyngeus, a muscle contributing to the elevation of the pharynx. This is the support staff, lifting and shaping the pharynx to aid in velopharyngeal closure. Teamwork at its finest. Moving on to the palatoglossus, the bridge between the soft palate and the tongue. Imagine it as the connector, facilitating the intricate movements needed for velopharyngeal closure. Like a skilled choreographer, ensuring every step is in sync. Last but not least, we have the salpingopharyngeus. This muscle elevates the lateral pharyngeal walls, rounding up our team effort for velopharyngeal closure. It's the architect, shaping the space to ensure a tight and effective seal. So there you have it, the velopharyngeal dream team in action. These muscles work seamlessly to create a secure seal, a process crucial not just for speech but also for effective airway management during procedures like gastrointestinal endoscopy under general anesthesia. In the realm of respiratory kinetics, wakefulness kicks off a meticulous coordination of muscle contractions and thoracic dynamics. Imagine this as a well-orchestrated symphony where every player has a crucial role to ensure the smooth flow of air. Now, let's zoom in on the first act, the inhalation. Picture the diaphragm and intercostal muscles working together in perfect harmony, initiating a cascade of events leading to the expansion of the thoracic cavity. But, here's where it gets interesting. With every breath, a critical player steps onto the stage, the generation of negative intraluminal pressure within the pharynx. It's like a vacuum pulling in air, driven by the increased volume in the thoracic cavity. Hold on, though. This negative pressure introduces a potential vulnerability in the upper airway. Soft tissues, like the soft palate, are at risk of collapse, threatening the unobstructed flow of air. Enter our heroes, the upper airway musculature. The genioglossus and tensor veli palatini take center stage, deploying a sophisticated defense mechanism to resist collapse induced by negative pressure. But here's the plot twist, the upper airway muscles aren't static defenders. They're dynamic maestros, neurologically driven to adapt in real time. Picture them adjusting to shifts in respiratory patterns, head position, and other nuances during wakefulness. The grand finale, the sustained tonic contractions of these muscles act as an effective countermeasure, ensuring airway patency. 
It's like a dance, a carefully choreographed routine preserving the unobstructed flow of air from mouth and nose to lungs. In conclusion, what we've uncovered here is a level of precision embedded within our respiratory defense mechanisms. It's a testament to the body's innate ability to navigate the challenges posed by negative pressure, ensuring the technical precision required for optimal respiratory function. First up, we're unwrapping the playbook of maneuvers for upper airway opening. Picture this, the chin lift, a move that widens the pharyngeal space, creating a vital pathway for air. Then there's the jaw thrust, a hero in relieving strider under anesthesia. But, a word of caution, neck extension may be needed, but tread carefully as it could potentially worsen upper airway obstruction, especially without CPAP. Now, let's talk about CPAP, or continuous positive airway pressure. It's a game changer in relieving upper airway obstruction. But, and there's always a but, applying it without an airtight airway can be a puzzle. Stick around, we'll unravel the devices making CPAP application a breeze later in the episode. Shifting gears to upper GI endoscopy, the lateral position takes the spotlight. Combine it with airway maneuvers, and you've got yourself a winning combo. Supine position? Not the hero we need for airway management during endoscopy. Head positioning becomes a personalized affair. Enter the sniffing position, a VIP for adults with obstructive sleep apnea. But here's the plot twist, OSA-related challenges like a receding chin and obesity can throw a curveball. Don't worry, though, because CPAP and the sitting sniffing position are here to save the day, overcoming airway obstruction like superheroes. Timely endoscope withdrawal and maneuver implementation steal the spotlight in our next segment. Essential for success, they're the dynamic duo preventing complications and ensuring a smooth procedure. Deep sedation brings its own set of challenges. Thoracoabdominal asynchrony, a common sidekick in deeper sedation with propofol, may rear its head. But fear not, as we explore how chin lift and jaw thrust can be the caped crusaders, combating posterior pharyngeal space constriction. Let's talk tech. Airway devices are stepping into the limelight, enhancing patient safety and procedural ease. Supplemental oxygen takes center stage, preventing desaturation drama during procedures. And, brace yourselves, ongoing advancements in anesthesia technology are on the horizon, tackling the demands of complex GI procedures head-on. Wrapping up, it's all about constant evaluation and adaptation. No one-size-fits-all approach here. The combination of maneuvers is the secret sauce, with continuous evaluation ensuring optimal airway management. It's like a carefully choreographed dance where the steps adapt to the music. Our first player on the stage is midazolam, a benzodiazepine with a potential for a dramatic duet. While it can cause respiratory depression and play with muscle tone, the key is a careful titration. Too much, and we risk a sedation symphony that compromises the airway. Next in line, dexmedetomidine, the smooth talker among alpha-2 adrenergic agonists. Picture a velopharyngeal waltz with minimal respiratory depression, a dose-dependent dance that's generally favorable. It's the suave seducer of sedation. Now, let's meet fentanyl, the opioid sensation. While it might lead the respiratory orchestra towards depression, its primary gig is in pain modulation, not muscle tone. Often seen harmonizing with other agents, it's a versatile virtuoso. Cue the entrance of propofol, the potent sedative hypnotic maestro. But beware, for it can conduct a dose-dependent symphony of respiratory depression. Its impact on velopharyngeal closure takes center stage, demanding a delicate dosing dance to avoid airway obstruction. Etomidate strides in, the minimalist maestro known for its light touch on respiratory function. Inducing with grace and sparing the velopharyngeal mechanism, it's the gentle conductor in certain cases. Ketamine takes the spotlight as the dissociative diva, 
preserving airway reflexes and maintaining muscle tone. In critical situations, it's the savior of upper airway function, orchestrating a unique composition. Lastly, the inhalational agents, sevoflurane and desflurane, enter the scene. Picture them as the atmospheric architects, crafting a dreamscape but with a potential downside, they can depress upper airway muscles. The key here? Close monitoring and a skillful adjustment of concentrations to prevent any airway compromise. That concludes our journey into the anatomy of the velopharynx and its role in airway management during general anesthesia for GI endoscopy. Join us next time as we uncover more on optimal anesthesia.